everyone. I, I hope you can all hear me well. Uh, my name is Jessica Spurtis, and I'm one of the freshman admissions advisors here at SUNY Plattsburgh, and this is our School of Business and Economics WebEx. Today, you're going to have the opportunity to speak with Dr. Gersh. He is one of the accounting professors that you can ask um, any questions that you really want to um, to him. We also have an alumni. Her name is Emily Higgins, as well as two current students within the School of Business and Economics. Um, throughout the presentation, you are more than welcome to submit questions through the chat, or you could privately send us messages and we can answer them throughout the conversation tonight. So, give you an overview of business. Um, what's really nice is that it's a growing industry. So, a lot of students are declaring their major into the business world. And it's one of the reasons behind that is just because um, the, I guess the, um, the salary that students are receiving are typically significantly higher than in, in other realms. So a lot of people are starting to focus on the business world, um, usually because, you know, anything within the financial industry, they could make around 65 um, salary a year, um, and a lot of people have a national salary of 36 out of college, so very nice to be making that type of money as soon as you graduate from college. Um, it's also a growing industry in the financial and auditor route for those that are interested in, in that part. Um, but by 2024, um, there's a projected over 600,000 jobs that will be within the market. So right before after you graduate from college. Students are in that process of, oh, I'm interested in business, and I'm not quite sure what I want to do in that realm. And we've created a list of possible job outcomes that you are um, more than welcome to go into. A lot of students are applying into it after they've graduated, and we'll touch base on a handful of the ones populated on the screen. Green. So one of the most popular programs that were um, professions that students will go into is becoming an accountant or an auditor. Um, these are people that will prepare and examine any financial records. Um, they'll make sure that everyone is essentially getting paid on time, assessing any financial operations, making sure that businesses are running efficiently and effectively. Um, by in between 2014 and 2024, there's going to be about an 11% growth with the industry. And your typical medium salary in 2015 was around a um, 67,000 per year. Um, Dr. Gabriel, I know that you see a lot of accounting students. Have you seen any go into this world? Yeah, so from the accounting side, since I'm the chair of the accounting, certainly I know every graduating they you now in accounting and where they go, they are employed by the public accounting, private account, public accounting meaning that the CPA firms, private accounting like GE and IBM and AT&T, and then the government and not-for-profit organization also. The average salary, as you mentioned, certainly is around that range. And uh, I'm, I'm sadly and glad to say that one of the highest you know, for the graduating class in May 2017 was $72,000. Wow. And where did they end up working? Well, I was KPMG in New York City office. Uh, there are two of them, and uh, Ernest and Young in Stanford, Connecticut, and uh, Burnton, which is close to us here, and uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, all in New York City and Boston. That's great. A program that a lot of students are interested in pursuing after college is becoming a market research analysis. Essentially what that is are people who will market different conditions to examine potential sales and growth within a product or a service. They're designed to help companies understand what products people want, who will buy them, and at what price. So essentially students that are really good at marketing strategies, um, are really focused, will go into this route. By 2024, there's going to be about a 19% growth within this field. And the salary is going to be around 62 k as well. Um, I know that one of the students that is going to be coming on board a little bit later, 
Andrew, he's a marketing major, so and we'll have him talk a little bit more about his program as a whole. But um, do you have any students within that field? Well, the marketing and entrepreneurship is a very strong program at the uh, certainly CNE Classburg and the School of Business and Economics. And, and they use the students very well, and they have a wonderful and great opportunity for expression learning and doing actual work even before graduation. Yeah, absolutely. So the I would say most popular routes that a lot of students kind of go towards would be becoming a financial advisor. Um, so these are geared towards company insurance, investments, mortgages, college saving, essentially any way to plan for for a big trip or a big step in life, a lot of folks will go to a financial advisor to seek help and assistance with how to save that money um, in the most efficient and effective way. So by 2024, thinking there's going to be about a 30% growth, so a substantial increase within the next 10 years or so. Um, and these folks are making quite a bit of change in their pockets, so around 89000 per year. Um, so, do you have any folks that have gone through that route as well? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> certainly, question, you know, because it comes, uh, you know, to my heart. And uh, my son, in fact, you know, he was a double major in accounting and finance, and work in the financial field on Wall Street. He has been to school for about eight years, and he decided to establish his own company in New York City. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Good for him. Mm -hmm. So we start to move things into our school of business and economics. We're going to have Emily kind of introduce herself, where she works, how she um, came about that process, and then we can focus, you know, more on Plattsburg as a whole. So if you can hear us, Emily, and we would love to hear your feedback. All right. You guys can hear me okay? Yep. All right. So my name is Emily Higgins, and I graduated in 2013 in the Global Supply Chain Management major. So basically that's a major where when you're producing and manufacturing goods of any kind in the business world, you start out with raw materials and then ultimately they get made into a finished product and then have to get delivered to customers. So there's so many different areas within Global Supply Chain Management and it is an up-and-coming field in the business world for sure. So I was fortunate enough that um, I studied global supply chain management and absolutely loved it. And my senior year, I went to a job fair on campus, and I was recruited by IBM at the time to work in their uh, supply chain business operations department, particularly working on their global inventory team. Past two years, um, my particular area of IBM was purchased by a company called Global Foundries. So I work for Global Foundries in Burlington, Vermont. I'm still on that same Global Foundries um, global operations team. It's basically, we have 10 manufacturing sites worldwide, and I am on a team that is analyzing all of basically our finance with our physical inventory. So we're looking at WIP within line, we make um, grow chips for any kind of electronic devices. So we're looking at how much that's costing the business, how much finished good inventory we have sitting around the world, and of making sure that we're our best financial assets to use and delivering our product on time to the customer. That's awesome. uh, very impressive. Um, but it kind of gives everyone an overview of the School of Business Economics at SUNY Plattsburgh. We have over, oh, sorry, we have 11 different majors and minors to choose from, which is pretty unique within different schools. So with some colleges, you see a degree in business administration with the concentrations in financing and accounting mm -hmm. and all of that. At Plattsburgh, they're standalone majors. So students are able to receive their bachelor's degree in global supply chain managed by Emily, or entrepreneurship at an undergraduate level, hotel restaurant and tourism management, and still traditional routes like finance and accounting. So it's definitely something that makes SUNY Plattsburgh very unique 
in comparison to a lot of other schools. And it's going to allow a lot of students to do a double major, sometimes even a triple major, and still graduate within four years. Um, so it gives students an overview of how many students are within the school, just about a thousand or so. Um, so it's, I would say it's a good size school. It's still gonna make those class sizes um, relatively small so that you can still be able to have those strong discussions. Um, and we all have 37 full-time faculty members and five are actually recipients of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. So um, Dr. Gaber, do you want to kind of talk about well, you know, I mean, I have been here for a long time, and I have experience in some other schools. I got my PhD from New York, and I had a chance to teach uh, bigger colleges. And Baruch it was one of them, and Queens, you know, for those who are from New York City, they are familiar with these schools. And the one thing that certainly distinguishes you know, SUNY Classburg is the relationship between faculty and students. We know you, from the first day you come to campus, you will be assigned to an academic advisor who knows you, who guide you through the process, not just, you know, to sign for courses, but to help you and see, you know, what you want after one year for after graduation, five years after graduation. And uh, just the last couple of days, I have one of our alumni who graduated in 1993. He came and he spent two days and going to classes, and we bring them to SUNY Classic just to tell the students who are currently in the system, this is what you can do with your degree coming out of SUNY Classic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, all of the programs that we have are populated on the screen. So um, as I mentioned earlier, Global Supply Chain and Demand being one of Emily's majors, um, Marketing, which is a program that one of our students is currently enrolled in. Um, Emily, did you have any minors when you were at Plattsburgh? I actually didn't. And I came back to the school last year to speak for Global Supply Chain Management in particular. And that is one thing looking back on the education that I would have done a little differently. I think we're so fortunate to have all of these different business majors and minors that you might as well dive into a few of them to see kind of exactly what you like and to modern your scope of your education. Exactly. If you could have done it all over again, what else would you have tackled on? That I did global supply chain management as my major, but I think it's always strong to have a finance background, accounting as well. Um, on a daily basis, I'm working with our finance team here. And, you know, international business kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with global supply chain management. And, and information systems, data is a huge driver in the business world, and you need to be aware of how those data systems work. So if I gotten into a bit more programming, I think that would have helped me as well. Awesome. Do you want to touch base on accounting and some of the other programs? Well, certainly no. <laughs> <laughs> we have relatively a medium-sized uh, accounting program. We have uh, full-time faculty, seven, and we don't have any teaching assistants, so every class in accounting is taught by a full-time faculty. We have about 180 students right now, and I'm hoping to grow that number to 250. That is what I'm hoping for. Um, now, accounting is one degree, but what I call one degree was 360 degrees of possibilities. You know, it is, you know, you do whatever you want. I have some accounting majors working in Hollywood and uh, working for production companies. One of them, in fact, was working with Sean Connery you know, a long time ago, and he, his job was to produce a big, one big movie with millions of dollars or two or three small type movies, so the in the budgeting area certainly needs certainly the accounting background. Account finance, they go together. And even for me, you know, personally, my education, I have a PhD in accounting, but half of it was finance. As uh, certainly was mentioned, um, you know, the analytics is the name of the game in the market, so we revived our accounting program to include Excel in almost every single course. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so we touched up on a handful of the programs already um, to focus a little bit more 
and the specific ones, um, hotel, restaurant, and tourism management for students that are interested in that hospitality route are going to get a really unique hands-on experience. So students are going to be working in our five-star student-run restaurant it's called mm -hmm. Samuel D's, and they are doing everything from open to close. So they will be prepping the food, they'll be cooking it, sharing it, hosting it, cleaning, opening, closing, all of that. Um, and they've had a lot of experiences doing internships in Lake Placid, Burlington, the, um, the Disney program. So lots of avenues to take within that route. Um, for marketing, we have a lot of different communication suites where students are able to be part of our classwork. So um, we have uh, different programs like graphic design where you compare the two up together we have a newspaper we've got a magazine um, so again lots of experience within that route um, Emily touched a lot upon um, the global supply chain management program but um, do you mind talking about what your courses were like so what types of courses you took and um, any experimental learning that you did along the way yeah, did you mean to touch upon internships right now or later Let's just a little bit later. Okay, perfect. Yep. So some courses that I took while at Plattsburgh. In supply chain management, you're going to be touching upon different things as I had stated before. So for instance, distribution. So if you're producing goods in, say, California, but they need to get shipped to New York, um, understanding the different methods and what you're shipping and how you can do that and the costs associated with that. So that was a course that took Another one, planning. So as far as resource management, so when you're producing these goods, how long is it going to take? You're talking about the cycle time of making these products and lead time and being as responsive to the customer as you possibly can because in the business world, you always want to make sure you have that customer relationship and just kind of the final aspect as well. So all of these courses does touch upon how much it's costing the business and um, how you're kind of going to move forward. So those were some that really stuck out in the mind that have helped me thus far in my career. Great. Thank you so much. Talk about interns and we can actually bring in some of our current students as well, but we have folks kind of doing just about anything you could go. So uh, within the school of business economics, we have an internship coordinator. So what they do is essentially help with maintaining relationships with different organizations. Um, sometimes there will be um, different job and internship fairs that will be created throughout um, the fall or the spring semester. And it's just a, one person that you can really go to to have your answers questions like where do I want to go? And, uh, can I find a paid internship, and can I find a credit-bearing internship, and if so, how to go about that process. So the internship coordinator is a phenomenal resource to use. Um, I know you've had, I'm sure, a handful of students do some pretty impressive things if you want to touch base on that. Yes, uh, certainly. In, in, internship and experiential learning is a must, you know, and uh, I would say that don't have only one. You have two, three, if you can. From the accounting and finance, you know, because related to IBM, at what Emily has mentioned, and we have about 140, uh, you know, co-op. We call it the co-op. You know, but IBM has a six-month co-op. So from January to June, actually, you leave the campus for six months and you actually work as a full-time, 40 hours. And different functions. We have Summers, New York, Armand, New York, uh, South Berwick, in Connecticut. South Carolina, Rochester, Minnesota. So you have a variety of different certainly states and different type of job within IBM. Currently, I have four people are doing, kind of from the accounting side, are doing the IBM co-op. And in fact, on Monday, the IBM managers, couple of managers are coming to the campus to recruit for the new season. And that's certainly, I'm sure every discipline has its own type of internship. For in accounting, we have tax internship. And about 17 students who, as we speak, are in between 3 and 60 tax hours. Tremendous amount of experience. They help the, you know, tri-counties uh, communities to do their taxes and it's free of charge. 
And uh, the community around us, they couldn't do it without certainly our academic majors and, and the people who would like to participate in that program. If any of you have questions listening in, please feel free to uh, shoot them out through our questions box. But Emily actually did a really impressive internship, and I would love to mm -hmm. have you mm -hmm. talk about that because it makes me really excited. Okay. So, like Dr. Gaber said, it's very crucial to have internships, more than one, I agree. So, I had actually my first internship was after my sophomore year and a domestic internship in Plattsburgh, New York, at a distribution center. And it made me hungry, and I wanted to learn some more. So I knew that the next summer I really wanted to do something a little bit um, on a grander scale. And I had always wanted to work for the London Olympics. It was just a dream of mine. So I reached out to my academic advisor, um, Brian Neuwerther, who is my first supply chain management. And I said, I know this is a long shot, but I would love to work for the Olympics and do happen to have any contacts at all. And he said, let me send a few emails and I'll get back to you. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and he got back to me. And he actually had a contact that had just moved to London and was going to be doing customs and freight forwarding work for UPS, but UPS was hired under the London Olympics contract. So they got me, or he got me in touch, and actually was studying abroad in London at the time, and they brought me in, and I interviewed when I was over there, and they said they would love to have me, and it was a little difficult getting some of the work and visas and everything, but from May until September, I was working on the Olympic Park and in the Athletes Village as a customs and freight forwarding advisor, so I was helping um, get any shipments into the United Kingdom for the Olympics. So, for instance, one had an email, and it was the Japanese women's soccer team, and they wanted to know how they could get all the food that they wanted in for their team, just special requirements. And then a pole vaulter needed his pole to be hacked into a Heathrow. So I was answering a lot of different random questions, and I thought what was most important for me was being so young and learning how to operate on an international scale. And I may owe so much credit to Brian Neuwerther, but Dr. Gaber said, Dr. Gaber has so many contacts. So our, your academic advisor at Plattsburgh State is crucial in your success, and they're always willing to help and put in the extra effort to help you succeed and ultimately get a job. And one student asked, and maybe you know this, mm -hmm. and they were wondering if any hotel, restaurant, and tourism management students have done internships in the Olympic Training Center over at Lake Placid? Where they are, you know, I don't have that in mind in it right now, but you know, I'm sure that it's a very strong program. And in fact, you, know, you mentioned that program, they are making some kind of innovation to include event planning and current, you know, management, and that's going to be a huge area, very much a demand in the market. And with the um, hospitality program that we have is that you can go anywhere with it. So you could stay local within the North Country and head over to um, Lake Acid, but you could also do an internship in New York City or throughout the country or even studying abroad like Emily had. Um, so that's a great question. And if, again, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out to us. Switch gears a little bit. We'll bring our students in so that they can introduce themselves. Um, thank you so much thank for giving us the time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. thank you. So have a great night. Sure. See you again. Thanks. And then just give one second while we bring in our students. Nope. Okay. So, if you want to just introduce yourself, where you're from, what you're studying, and then we can go from there. So, can see you. Yeah. Yeah, we can see you a little bit more than I can see me. <laughs> <laughs> so, my name is Andrew. I'm a uh, senior marketing major from Long Island. Uh, Tia, I am a junior triple major in economic finance and management information systems, and I live in Queens. And graduating is where <laughs> Yes, I was <laughs> May 2018. Just around the corner. <laughs> but if you guys want to touch base 
perspective on your programs and some coursework that um, you've seen, that I think that would be a hope for these students listening in. Sure. So I'm a marketing major, so we do a lot of things in the community in regards to uh, like business plan, advertising and planning, uh, marketing research, things like that. Um, so actually, last year in my marketing research class, uh, there's a gentleman in the community who came to us and uh, he was thinking about opening up a brewery uh, and he wanted us to do the market research to see if Plattsburgh was a, a viable location to to, uh, to have a brewery like that. So we did the market research, um, came back to him and we said, yeah, Plattsburgh would be a great, great spot. Uh, so we ended up opening, the, opening up the brewery and the next semester I was taking an advertising class. Uh, he came to us again. He said, hey guys, help me make a, an advertising plan uh, to help you know promote the, the opening up for the work. Uh, so then we got to work with him again, and um, it was just really neat to see how uh, what we're doing as class projects is actually turning out to be some of a business. Well, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just choose one for now. Um, <laughs> what I like is most of my classes, it's what I learn is something that I can actually experience outside the class. So, so I don't feel like, you know, so, some classes are just like, why are we learning? this if I'm never going to apply it anywhere. So my major economics, I love to travel. So like I studied abroad a lot. And this one class I'm taking right now called economic development, we literally sit down and talk about different countries and why some countries are more developed than others, what are the reasoning behind it, the culture. And it's amazing to me because for me who has been studying abroad and went to other countries, I get to use what I learned outside and apply it in the classroom to understand maybe this might be the reason why one country is more efficient than the other. So I find it amazing and that's something I see myself doing in the future, just you know, living on the plane and working with different countries. That's awesome. Um, have either of you done internships? So you talked about studying abroad. Yeah. Um, I've done two. It will be on my third one this year. Um, my freshman year, I interned at J.P. Morgan. And my sophomore year, I interned at EY, Ernest & Young. And this year, I will be interning at Deloitte. So I did an internship. Not really. Um, <laughs> she makes fun of this story all the time. Um, I went through the process of of starting my internship, I was actually at a uh, dental marketing firm. So we did uh, advertising and uh, planning for different dental organizations on Long Island. Um, so I went through the whole thing. They got to the point where they were going to hire me as their intern. Um, and then I said, wait, what if we turn this into a job? Because I don't really need these credits. Uh, so instead of getting three credits, I just got a paycheck every week. And that's what I want. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so now that you've heard a little bit about our students, you've gotten a chance to hear from Emily and Dr. Gaber. Um, since that you have the opportunity to get involved um, on our campus, specifically within the School of Business and Economics, is through all our clubs. Um, within every major that we have within the school, there's types of club for it, as well as an honor society as well. So are either of you involved in any of the marketing shenanigans? <laughs> yeah. So I'm involved with our uh, our marketing honor society, uh, Alpha Mu Alpha, as well as the Entrepreneurship Honor Society. Uh, it's the CEO club, the Collegiate Entrepreneurship Organization. I'm currently the president of the Economics Club, and as well as the member in NABO, which is the National Association of Black Accounting. So what do you do in the Accounting Club? The or the, um, the Economics Club. So. <laughs> so um. With the economic club, I wanted to branch out for all students because people, when people hear the word economic, they think it's only for economic majors. But one I realized is a huge struggle is when students come into college not knowing any financial, anything financial. So they feel like you have to be a finance major to learn about it. And with, um, I realized that not a lot of people know how to get a credit card. That's a huge deal. So the club would like present how to get a credit card and how to maintain it. Or when you get a loan, how do you pay it off? Or um, when you want to sign a lease. So people never understood, like, economics is literally everywhere. Everything you do is economics behind it. Absolutely. Were you involved in any clubs or activities when you were at Plattsburgh? Yes, I was in the supply chain club. 
um, and a different organization called APIX that was involved with supply chain. But it's all good to have those on your resume when you're applying to jobs. I want to see that not only are you involved um, in your academics, but outside of the classroom as well. The School of Business and Economics is located in Osable Hall. It is a brand new $12 million building. It opened up in 2013. So um, with, we have about 18,000 square feet. We actually, on Friday, will be opening up a Center for Cybersecurity and Technology, uh, which I had the pleasure of meeting with one of the, the kind of of this a couple weeks ago. Um, and what's great about the center itself and and if either of you know anything, then oh, feel free to chime in. But um, it's this center for students interested in uh, management information systems, computer science, cybersecurity, really anything within the business realm. Um, and they create something called a white hacker space. So if any of you have seen um, Criminal Minds, you know, Penelope, they, they have you fill out um, this essential contract that says um, what you're going to be doing is the good hacking, uh, which I think is pretty yeah. impressive so that you can say that, you know, you already have experience with this um, in college if that's a path you want to pursue in um, your few endeavors. And it's great because a lot of small businesses with Strasburg are actually going to utilize this space as well. Um, so if you have anything to say, feel free to chime in. Yeah, um, one of my classes right now is data privacy, and Christian Baylor, the one who works in it, he's my professor. And it's so cool because usually end of the class, he always like screams and be like, like make sure you put the IP address back to the school because <laughs> what we do in classes, we turn off our school IP address and uses our own physically get into the computer next to us and try to see what they're doing. So we use like this app called Sharkfire and basically shows us everything that someone was doing on the computer. So like if you give your friend your computer and like hey, do whatever you want and then all you gotta do is get it back and you can see you can see the emails that was being sent. <laughs> so it's really cool. And then at the end of class he was like put it back to the school IP address because if they don't the next person who logs into the computer will not have any internet access at all. So that's one of the fun class and learning cool. experience. And within Osable Hall, we also have an accounting lab, an MIS lab, computer science lab. Um, have you utilized the accounting lab at all? If you want to touch base on it, every print. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I just use it to mostly a study when there's no classes in there. It's just like a quiet place for me. It's a computer right there. That's all the software for me, which is perfect because not every computer has it. So like if you want to use Visio Studio or updated Excel website or Access, it has all the programs on that computer. Same me. I took, uh, well, you, part of the business program is you have to take a, you know, the basic set of courses to taking like MI accounting. Uh, I still myself using those different labs. Very nice. Learn more. We have one question. What is an example of the activities or trips that business school honors clubs participate in? Um, if both of you want to touch on that. Sure. So one of the uh, first things that I got involved with was the entrepreneurship club on campus. Uh, so my first semester here, uh, we were actually going uh, down to Albany. Uh, we had into a business plan competition there. Uh, it's a startup weekend, and that was a 40 hours to come up with a business plan. Uh, you got to come up with everything from the product, the business plan, and then pitch it to investors uh, with 48 hours. Um, so that was a, a really unique experience. Being that it was my first semester here, I was like three weeks into college and I knew nothing. So just to you know, kind of get pushed in, uh, that was a lot for me. Um, we actually sent three teams down to that competition. Uh, and we took first, second, and third place there. So that was uh, my highlight of my first semester. <laughs> <laughs> one of um, the school trips we go on is the one Dr. Gaber usually holds, which is really amazing. My favorite one is the New York City trip. So every spring semester, we go down to New York City and we visit Wall Street. My favorite is the New York Stock Exchange. And I always be like, Grandma, I'm recording me. I'll be on TV <laughs> when it opens. So every I'm always on TV. 
TV and we're just like one day password will be able to ring the bell. But you know, since technology all you gotta do is press the button, but still that's my goal. But um we go there's a lot of alumni, so we go to uh Knight Capital as well. We visit a big accounting firm and it's and it's like you also get a tour. It's not like you just walk in, like we meet someone who give us a tour and then they feed us too, which is great. And you get to network, handing your resume and who knows, you might there one day, and that's how a lot of students here get internships and jobs is being able to go down there and meet them. That's awesome. I want to learn more about other business programs or what um, we have to offer. You can visit www.blf.gov. And feel free to ask questions throughout the way, but um, for any of you that have not come to campus and are interested in seeing the North Country, we'll actually have a School of Business and Economics Day on Saturday, April 8th, and we have two open houses coming up, so one is going to be on April 1st, and the other one is going to be on April 22nd. Um, you can register for all of that online. And that's it. So if you don't have any other questions, thank you so much for chatting with us. We mm -hmm. really appreciate it. And have a great day. Thank you so much, Emily, for um, everything that you uh, were able to talk to us about as well. Of course. Good night, everyone. You too. Bye.